Okay, so first thing to get things started today, we're going to do a quick little brainstorming, throwing some ideas out there and getting some feedback on why make videos. Before we do this, can I get sound on the machine, please? I'm going to play a little video, um, which is, a, I think, a good example of an educational video, um, which is kind of what we're all hoping to produce. Have we got sound? I might get very loud. No. No. Oh, sorry about this. It worked earlier on. <laughs> it was? Oh, I think that was it. I heard a pop. Let's go again. Nope. Chat amongst yourselves for a minute. Take five. We're ahead of ourselves anyway, so there's no... It was working. We can make it work. I'll put it on so we can see who it is. Do you, do you, some of you might recognise this guy. Hans Rosling. Have you ever seen him? He's obviously, you see him every now and again popping up on BBC. And on. Yeah, don't pop everyone's ears. Shall I just unplug the... Okay, keep, it, keep it playing while we get the sound in. I could play it through the speaker. <laughs> this yeah. isn't going. Why don't you, why don't you Hello, you're out? late. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, well, we, oh, yeah, you might not. Actually, no, you're not late. You're perfect. We started. Sorry. Whoops. But sit down. I've only done the quick introduction. Can you sit there? Are you, you want, uh, I can't see you. Uh, no, that's there. Can if you sit there or over here? Oh, that's my jacket. Oh, there's a seat here as well. I've just quick, we're just trying to get a video of working, so you, you're okay. Um, oh, thank you. My name's Russ. Yes, thank you. Have we got sound? Don't know. Okay, I'm going to play it through the um, laptop speakers if it's not. No, it's not working at all. <laughs> right, let's turn it up. Visualization is right at the heart of my old work too. I teach global health. And that, I know that, that having the data is not enough. I have to show it in ways people both enjoy and understand. Now, I'm going to try something I've never done before. Animating the data in real space with a bit of technical assistance from the crew. So, here we go. First, an axis for health. Life expectancy from 25 years to 75 years. And down here, an axis for wealth, income per person 400, 4,000, and 40,000 dollars. So, down here is poor and sick, and up here, is rich and healthy. Now, I'm going to show you the world 200 years ago, in 1810. Here come all the countries. Europe brown, Asia red, Middle East green, Africa South of Sahara blue, and the Americas yellow. And the size of the country bubble showed the size of the population. And in 1810, it was pretty crowded down there, wasn't it? All countries were sick and poor, Life expectancy were below 40 in all countries. And only the UK and the Netherlands were slightly better off, but not much. And now, why start the world? The Industrial Revolution makes countries in Europe and elsewhere move away from the rest. But the colonized countries in Asia and Africa, they are stuck down there. And eventually, the Western countries get healthier and healthier. And now, we slow down to show the impact on the First World War and the Spanish flu epidemic. What a catastrophe! And now I speed up through the 1920s and the 1930s, and in spite of the Great Depression, Western countries forge on towards greater wealth and health. Japan and some others try to follow, but most countries stay down here. Now, after the tragedies of the Second World War, we stop a bit to look at the world in 1948. 1948 was a great year. The war was over. Sweden topped the medal table at the Winter Olympics, and I was born. 
but the differences between the countries of the world was wider than ever. United States was in the front, Japan was catching up, Brazil was way behind, Iran was getting a little richer from oil, but still had short lives. And the Asian giants, China, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Indonesia, they were still poor and sick down here. But look what is about to happen. Here we go again. In my lifetime, former colonies gained independence, and then finally they started to get healthier and healthier and healthier. And in the 1970s, then countries in Asia and Latin America started to catch up with the Western countries. They became the emerging economies. Some in Africa follows. Some Africans were stuck in civil war and others hit by HIV. And now we can see the world today in the most up-to-date statistics. Most people today live in the middle. But there are huge differences at the same time between the best of countries and the worst of countries. And there are also huge inequalities within countries. These bubbles show country averages, but I can split them. Take China, I can split it into provinces. There goes Shanghai. It has the same wealth and health as Italy today. And there is the poor inland province Guizhou. It is like Pakistan. And if I split it further, the rural parts are like Ghana in Africa. And yet, Despite the enormous disparities today, we have seen 200 years of remarkable progress. That huge historical gap between the West and the rest is now closing. We have become an entirely new converging world. And I see a clear trend into the future with aid, trade, green technology and peace. It's fully possible that everyone can make it to the healthy, wealthy corner. Well, what you just seen in the last few minutes is a story of 200 countries shown over 200 years and beyond. It involved plotting of 120,000 numbers. Pretty neat, huh? So that's what we want you to be able to produce by the end of the day tomorrow. <laughs> Great. It's Love it when that works. <laughs> I always think that's not going to work very well. No one's going to laugh at that. Um, now, Steve, so what did, you, what did you think of that video? Do you think it was good or bad? Or? Well, well, I think it's a wonderful way of presenting statistics. Yeah. It's very dynamic. Yeah. And uh, it's very enthusiastic. And it sort of got it's me really excited. Into it. I was thinking, wow, this, yeah. this is wonderful. You know? yeah. What was it that you liked about it then? The visual. The graph. Yeah. The so the layering of the graphics yeah. on top of... The video. Just give me sort of ideas. I'm thinking, oh, well, I could sort of use something like that. Yeah. Anyone else? Do you have any thoughts on that? It's all fairly concise, isn't it? So, so you get the whole message across you know, yeah. fairly quickly, and you've got something to say throughout the whole thing. What do you think it'd be like without him and the graphics? Graphics, the, the, just the subject. If it was a, maybe a slightly less dynamic. Quite dry, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's why it makes it come alive. And then I've got a, fa I've got a particular favourite bit in the video. The bit when he says. Um, what a catastrophe <laughs> when there's a drop all of a sudden with the plague and just that normally that would just be like just another statistic but he adds quite a lot to that um okay um any other thoughts on it anything that people didn't like about it oh, so it's a winner <laughs> great okay so with that in mind um why 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 make videos i just want to start to get people thinking about why we're actually going to make videos um Genevieve, Genevieve, you've been making videos over the last few weeks. You haven't over uh, weeks or months. I'm not sure, but what what is it that about video that you want to explore? First, to convey messages like in a more um, interesting way, really. Because I mean, what we found so a video that we made based on research we did in Ethiopia, um, it got nearly two thousand hits very quickly yeah. compared to say if we had published a paper or yeah. something, it wouldn't have reached. Such what a what was it that made that happen? Um, Did you share it? Because it was a really, um, was really nice visuals. Yeah. yeah. So documenting what you see and mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good yeah, way to and document and, and capture and things when you... And dramatic landscapes as well. So yeah. we were looking at, um, say, tree planting in two very different landscapes in Ethiopia and right. demonstrating that through video was much more interesting than writing what? a report about it. Um, how did you share that? Like, how did you get so many hits on it? What did you um, put it on? So it was on YouTube. Okay, right. And then we were tweeting and putting it on Facebook yeah. and all of that. Isn't it? So that's one of the things with video is you can show 
a lot more. You've got so many different layers of communication with video. And then nowadays we can just share it really effectively with YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, um, people, I don't know, I'm trying to think of other things. Have you shown it in lectures as well? Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so um, it's a powerful way of communicating, basically. I think that's kind of what, what we, we, what, that's what I think of the video, isn't it? So um, how, how is it used in education? Have you got any examples of how it's used in education that people can think of? We've been making short video clips that complement lectures. Yeah. So students can watch them in their own time and then it relates to uh, the Do they watch material. that before the lecture or after um, the lecture? Both. Okay, so is, that, uh, what's, is a flipped classroom when it's before the lecture? That's it, yeah, yeah. so a flipped cla a classroom. Mm -hmm. Any other examples of video in education? Well, I think the only experience I've had actually of videoing was when I was uh, doing a teaching session on introducing a uh, catheter into the right, okay. So that was on a video. Of course. Right, okay. Somebody filmed me. Doing that. Yeah, but when I, that was done on a CD and then I, I sort of played it the other. In the lecture itself? Yeah. Could you not have done that in, in the lecture? Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. I'm just wondering, I mean, I think yeah, it's great yeah, that, that you can. If you I hadn't used it, Paige, and I, and I, I sort of looked at it the other, the other day because I thought, well, I'm going to listen to that's pretty crappy, actually. But it, would there be any other way of showing it other than video? <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. <laughs> Hello, Hello, I'm Russ. We're just starting, so don't worry. We're just thinking about video and why we record things. Sorry, what were you saying? Well, yeah, in, in, the, in the anatomy lab. Yeah, there. so you could have had people gathered around and showing yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, but then you, you've got to think of the HTA, you know, the human tissue right, okay. with all the ethics. And, and a video is something that you can reuse over and over again. So once you've done it, you don't have to bring the students, you just do it that one time and then reuse it. But then of course, one would have to be careful about videos. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, any other thoughts on how video is used in education? I work on a course that's entirely distance learning. Okay, yeah, distance. They never come here, so yeah. they have to have videos yeah. of lectures. Yeah. And so they get all those online yeah. through, is there a specific like portal that you've got set up or do you use? Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, so you can have secure sort of networks on Vimeo as well, can you? And then, so you said mentioned Blackboard, you've got things like Panopto as well, where yeah. lectures are recorded and then shared on Blackboard and things like that. Um, and then you've got more traditional sort of things like YouTube and stuff like that. Um, and something I was thinking about when I was putting things together for this is, it's not necessarily traditional education, but I was thinking about cookery shows and like watching cookery shows, that's a form of using video in education, we're all learning from things like that. I've cooked so many jamming all other things from his TV shows that, yeah, so you don't even realise that you're learning on some things like that. Um, okay, so, and MOOCs as well, you've got things like MOOCs um, that are sort of getting more and more popular, and SOOCs, and I can't even think what they mean, but MOOCs and SOOCs. Okay, so what, what are the strengths, we've already touched upon this a little bit, what are the strengths and what are some of the weaknesses of video in education, or video in general? Does anyone think of any sort of ideas? One of the strengths is providing access. Um, yeah. People perhaps can't, can't, can't get to. Yeah, like on, on Nicola. <laughs> like Nicola said, yeah, so yeah. distance learning. Um, yeah, that, and as well, we've got a lot of field courses out yeah. the beaches and things like that, where occasionally we'll have a disabled student. Right, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and the fact that something can be watched over and over again yeah. by different people. So that, that similar to what John was saying with the cadaver, like, it's, you can't necessarily do that all the time, but if you record it, Something you can keep showing over and over again. And it'd be great, actually, just a, a, a laugh. Uh, Alan came up with a good idea, actually, for what I'm saying. He said I could make lots of these little uh, videos and then I could go on a cruise and things like that. I mean, uh, I could direct <laughs> it from uh, you know, something. Brilliant idea. So can we uh, do that, Lizzie, please? Can we go on a. Um, <laughs> so, access. Access is a good thing so that we can get people to learn if they can't necessarily make it to a university or people who've got um, jobs people who can't necessarily afford the university lifestyle, they can learn from a distance whilst doing their full-time job and things like that, if they've got families. Um, any weaknesses? I mean, I've got loads of strengths that I can list off, but I'm just wondering, is there any weaknesses that people can think? Yeah. 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 That's good. And you have to simplify things a lot, so it can lose some of the meaning if you're not careful. Right, yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
But then you could have support materials. Mm -hmm. The great thing about the internet is you can have video and then you can have so many different sort of avenues to provide support materials, whether that's images or yeah. PDFs or whatever. Um, it's passive as well, isn't it? You're sitting there yeah. watching. Yeah, so that's one of the things I was going to say, the lack of contact with the teacher. You can watch a video and you can learn something, but then that there's a lessening of communication between the student and the teacher, so whether that's a good thing or not. Um, any other strengths? Well, if you've got um, like a resource, we often um, in health they get a lot of external speakers in and their specialists often yeah. medics or whatever, so they'll record them giving their session yeah. and therefore they can reuse that in many courses or many times. My wife, something similar than this, my wife's a lecturer and she, if she, she does um, performance lecturing, she works in the theatre department in Aberystwyth and if she can't get an artist or a performer to come to Aberystwyth, because we're out in the middle of nowhere in Aberystwyth, she'll use Skype and she can get somebody from London to be there giving a presentation in front of the whole classroom like 200, 300 miles away, so that's really useful for her, she does that quite a lot. Um, what about different learning styles? Do you think video is beneficial for people with different learning styles? Mm -hmm. I mean, what way? Some people like more practical based learning rather yeah. than reading something. Yeah. Like and working along with like kinesthetic learning. And then you've got things like people sometimes just listen. You know, you can have a video, but you can listen. So you've got different levels of communication. You've got the visual element, you've got the follow along sort of. So people who are visual learners, um, kinesthetic learners, people who learn by doing along with it. So it appeals to lots of different types of learning styles. Um, Trying to think of another negative one. Oh, this, uh, this is one that Lizzie mentioned a while back when we started, the illusion of learning. Just because I've watched Jamie Oliver cook a fantastic meal doesn't mean that I can necessarily cook that meal. <laughs> I think I can, <laughs> but I can't. So you have to then take that information and put it into practice. So that's one of the downfalls. Just because you watch a video doesn't mean you can do that. Um, OK, so that's good, yeah. Um, there's also, I mean, there's quite a few that I've got listed down here, but I'll, I'll, there's one of the negatives is there's so many videos out there now that it can be quite difficult to find good, good content. But I think as we get more and more familiar with searching for these sort of resources, that we get more able to spot the good from the bad. So I think we're working around that. Okay, final bit then. Um, just because we can make, this isn't a question, it's a statement. Just because we can make videos doesn't mean that we should. Can you think of any reasons why we shouldn't? make a video. <laughs> if you're thinking about it, you think, hang on, should I really do this? What sort of things? I, mean, I guess it's ethics. Right, yeah. Yeah. Especially, you know, what I do, the ethics. Yeah, of course, yeah. So what do you need to be able to, what sort of things do we need to be able to get around that? Yeah. But more than anything, I think time. People think that they can just quickly make a video in no time, but there's a lot of planning. And if you haven't got the time to do it, and you haven't got the time to plan it, then maybe you shouldn't do it. <laughs> so can you think of like what sort of things would be involved that take time in making a video? Planning is one thing. Editing, yeah, you mentioned something earlier on, like the scripting process, mm -hmm. which you didn't do beforehand, but mm -hmm. by doing that, it can help later on. Um, material. Yeah. Finding people to actually be in the video. Planning where we were shooting um, down on Aberystwyth Beach um, in particularly difficult conditions but the weather, we were so dependent on weather so we couldn't just go out and do it. We had to plan around the weather so it took time. So if you haven't got time, you haven't necessarily, you shouldn't necessarily make the video. Um, something else as well, something that's kind of vitally important to any sort of communication or video or educational resource, if you haven't got anything to say, anything worthwhile to say, anything worthwhile communicating. Okay, well, time is up. Lizzie is up now with the scripting exercise.